one thing is for sure here. When it comes to the Caleb Harris case, there's really like no direction to actually start looking. Not that they're telling us. Reactions. Disclaimer. Everything stated in this video is my opinion and my opinion only. And just like everything else in these cases we discuss here on this channel, everything is alleged. Caleb Harris. We've been talking about that one for a while. He went missing around the same time that Riley Strain went missing, and a lot of attention was on the Riley Strain case. Well, right whenever Caleb Harris's case started getting some traction, then other things with people involved in Caleb Harris's case started happening, because as most of you guys know, the spokesperson for the family for Caleb Harris then became the spokesperson for Seth Rogers because the Pascal show, Pascal from the Pascal show, put them two together. There was a live where he was talking to Seth. He asked Seth if he could get him in contact with somebody. And then he got him in contact with Tony. The story of how those two came together is pretty well known. And I'm not putting any blame on Pascal for anything because of the current turn of events. I believe that in the beginning, Tony was representing himself like a good human because he was representing a God-fearing family. Now, while Seth does this a lot about God, especially whenever he gets up on these panels and stuff like that, the way that he behaves himself, even I know, is not godlike for people who, you know, want to claim the whole like religious go to church situation. That man's behavior does not exude what he wants everyone to think of him. Plain and simple, it's not defamation if the facts are out there. And the facts are the way that he does this about himself doesn't prove whenever we see his behaviors and how he actually is. So the more that Tony started hanging out with Seth, the more of Tony's true nature started coming out. Yeah, we talked about this earlier in the Sebastian Rogers video. Now, there's been some discrepancies now about this TikTok situation. There's people that take up for Tony that are claiming that Caleb Harris's father, Randy, who was supposed to actually be real friends with Tony, unlike Tony and Seth, where it was like a fly by night situation. Randy and Tony apparently worked together and he was part of the original people that started the GoFundMes for the family. I don't know if that's bad or good. I'm just pointing that out. Now, again, there's people taking up for Tony claiming that Caleb's dad allowed Tony to take down everything of Caleb's and rename the TikTok account because Tony is the one who made the TikTok account. But I'm hearing that there's like a recorded conversation where there's an argument and a couple other things. And as far as I can tell, I don't know a single person who is a parent searching for their child where there's literally no answers. Just like there's no make no sense boo boo bullshit in the Sebastian Rogers case. There's no answers whatsoever. Make no sense boo boo bullshit in the Caleb Harris case. They have given us this direction to look and then this direction and then told us, no, that direction is not the right one. Now I need y'all to look back over this way and we still don't have anything. The Secret Service has been involved trying to get information on the cell phones. The cell phone is what this video is about today. We believe there are, there's at least one person out there in the community that knows what happened to him. Uh, so we're waiting to hear from that person or, or somebody that knows that person. There's a lot of work being done behind the scenes. Every week uh, we uncovered uh, some new information that leads us to ask more questions. Every week we learn something new and uh, it, we feel like it's every week we're getting a little closer to solving it. Now, I didn't know this until if, I don't know, sometime last week, I believe it was the end of last week, I was watching Brooke's channel, Crime Lines and Lies, and she was talking about the fact that Caleb Harris's phone apparently had some recent activity, activity that happened after he went missing. Now, if you guys need details on his actual disappearance, there's plenty of videos on it. We've been covering it here for a while. He disappeared in the very beginning of March. And yeah, no answers. Now, apparently this activity sort of like freaked people out. What I am understanding is that somebody came out on TikTok and said something to the public about the activity on Caleb's phone, which then prompted law enforcement to come out with a statement. Although this activity may give the impression that Caleb has reactivated his cell phone, detectives are supremely confident that this is not the case, but instead it is simply the result of one of the many investigative techniques currently being employed by the forensic computer examiners. Now, this is the problem I have with this statement. What do you mean that you are supremely confident that it is just 
a random technique. This doesn't sound like they know, does it? This does not sound like they actually are giving us a fact here. Because if this was a fact, they would have said something along the lines of detectives are investigating or are using investigative techniques on Caleb Harris's phone. And those techniques are currently being employed by the forensic computer examiners. Why didn't they just say straight up the forensic computer examining team did something and made the phone look like it reactivated? Why would they say something like, oh, we're confident that that's what it is? That means there's a chance that that's not it, right? Is, is my brain working correctly on that whole thing? Because that sounds like they don't really know. The crazy part about that is that right after that information came out, a phone was found. Now, we haven't gotten any information about this phone. As far as I know, they haven't validated anything. The world knows about it. The people that are following Caleb's case know about it. But we don't know what they've done with it. All we know is that it was turned over and the timing of this socio activity, them being confident in what it is, which means there's a possibility that they are wrong because that's not a fact. That's basically like an assumption. They are guessing what it is. Okay. Just a few days later, this phone gets found. Now this was five days ago. Today is June 12th. So I'm going to assume this was like on the 7th. I don't have a date on my community tab for this. It just says, five days ago. But this is where I posted this and it came from someone named Naomi Jamie. That's what she goes by on Facebook. She posted this and it states the following. Hi guys, I found the phone off of, I believe, the North Packery Jetty. The iPhone was found around 8.30, 8.40 by me on the concrete off the jetty. However, when asking other beachgoers if it was theirs, they said no. One woman said it was found in the water by another person and then left there. So someone witnessed somebody else pick this phone up out the water, take a look at it, probably realized it was in the water. It's useless to me. I can't do anything with it, even if I tried, and then put it down on the concrete next to the jetty. It goes on to state, when I picked it up initially, I was just trying to find the owner and I did not assume or think that it was Caleb Harris's phone. The thought of that being a possibility didn't come to mind. Before leaving the beach, I posted in the Padre Islander and I left the post beat. That's where everyone saw it originally was the Padre Islander. Then a lot of folks were responding with it that it could be his. So I called the non-emergent phone number for the CCPD this morning at 8. Now it is currently in their possession as of 1014 that morning. So we don't have answers. And I've checked the Facebook pages to see if anybody's mentioned anything, if there's been any update, nothing. Now, apparently, and like, duh, right? All they would really have to do is check the serial number to see if it matches the one on Caleb's account. Now, just because we haven't heard anything doesn't mean that they didn't do that. And it doesn't mean that it's not Caleb's phone. We don't know. The family hasn't come out and said that it looks familiar. As far as I can tell, there's just no more information. It's just really strange that we have this movement on Caleb's phone activity and then this phone gets found and then quietness. But that's pretty much it. That's legitimately all of the updates and it's literally just like up in the air, maybes. Now, I've been looking into another missing boy's case, another missing man's case, young, young man's case, somebody in their low 20s. And I'm seeing some really strange comparisons, not really technically in the way that they disappeared themselves, basically in the way that like maybe they might be living their lives versus what their parents might approve of and the way that the parents behave about it publicly, which if these men are not missing would be a really big reason to not show yourself, which is something that needs to be considered considering that there's no answers. Now, I know Caleb Harris left behind everything besides his phone, keys to his vehicle, his wallet, all of the things. But people do disappear and start over. People do run away from their life for one reason or another. And sometimes people just never find out why. So even though this is insane, and I personally believe that foul play is definitely involved here, I think that there's a lot of credence to something that the parents don't want to talk about because of their religion. And that's not very fair to finding Caleb. We're going to talk about that in another video. I don't think it's appropriate without the full context. So we'll talk about that in another video along with the other case.
but that's it for these updates. Again, nothing. No answers, no real directions on where he possibly could have went. Just he ordered DoorDash for lunch the next day whenever he was supposed to go fishing after class, put the dog that he just got, him and his roommate just got that day, back into the apartment, and then magically just poofed. And honestly, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. Alien abduction at this point is the only thing that makes any sense. Who knows? The truth is always stranger than fiction, though, right? Oh, and one more thing when it comes to TikTok Tony, apparently he's not going to be TikTok Tony anymore because that, that page is gone. The one that he did create for Caleb Harris that there's all this controversy over that he then renamed, removed all of Caleb's information, put, put his, his own face, all the things at 11,000 followers. It's no longer there. So either TikTok got hip to his boo-boo and deleted it or he deleted it himself. We don't know. We don't know, but I'm sure Mr. Drama Mouth will be out here telling everybody by tonight exactly what happened. I'm not going to hold my breath because honestly, I'm over it. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. I'm over it. That's it though, you guys. If you like the way that I present this information and give my opinion, please do not forget to leave a like on the way out and subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed already. See y'all.